Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be talking about whether the Canon G7X Mark II is worth it in 2023. My name is Mark, and on this channel, we do a lot of product reviews, camera reviews like this one, and different ways on how to improve our videos. So if you are interested on watching said videos, please do consider subscribing. So the Canon G7X Mark II was released in 2016, which makes this officially a seven-year-old camera. With a lot of cameras being released throughout the years, it's hard to imagine whether this thing is still viable because whenever a new iPhone comes out, you automatically think that the newer iPhone will do a lot better than the previous model, right? So first things first, let's talk about megapixels. So a lot of people like to talk about that because they think that that's where all the image quality comes from. So this is a 20 megapixel camera and I know what you're thinking. You're gonna say that, oh, my iPhone has more megapixels than, than that thing, right? More megapixels doesn't always mean better image quality. Sometimes it relies on the sensor, the color science, and yeah, so 20 megapixels is more than enough for a camera like this. One other thing you have to remember that this is an APS-C crop sensor camera, which is a point and shoot style camera, which means you cannot change the lens, like for example, like this. For example, this Sony a7 IV, you can change your lenses. You can just upgrade, if you will, to different lenses, but with the G7X Mark II, you are stuck with a 24 to 100 millimeter equivalent lens, which is not so bad. This lens goes from f1.8 to f2.8. So if you are at the widest, it will be at f1.8. And the moment you zoom in, it will start moving towards the f2.8 aperture, which is not bad. It's as expected with lenses like this, because you can only use the f1.8 usually at 24 millimeter. And the moment you just move the zoom zoom dial here or the zoom rocker, you are gonna be on f2 all the way to f2.8. So yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. So let's talk frame rates really quick. So I'm a video guy. I don't really do much photography like my wife. So this camera can go from 24 frames per second all the way to 60. So 24 is your basic cinematic angle or your cinematic shot, which allows you to have the most motion blur like this, and it gives you a more natural feel. Opposed to shooting in 60 FPS, which is commonly used for slow motion, like whenever I shoot my skateboarding videos, I shoot in 60 FPS, so if I do want to slow it down, I have the option to. So yeah, this camera can do slow motion plus the 24. So this camera offers IBIS. It has in-body image stabilization, which it comes in three levels, low, standard, and high. I would rarely use high. I've only used it a, a couple of times because I don't like the way it crops in. And yeah, I lose a lot of width or a lot of focal length, if you will, because it, it can go up to 24 millimeters wide, right? The moment you put it on high, I think you're gonna be around 30 millimeters. And if you are vlogging with 30, it's gonna be just your face. So that's something to keep in mind when it comes to using the IBIS on the G7X Mark II. I think the most painful pill to swallow for some people is sadly this camera does not have 4K, which I don't mind actually. Whenever I'm out vlogging or making content or shooting skateboarding videos, I normally just shoot 1080. If a company hires me, that's the only time I will shoot 4K. And the 1080 on this G7X Mark II is actually pretty, pretty astounding. You'd never expect a camera like this to give you such clean 1080 footage. So let's talk about pros really quick, like the advantages of having a G7X Mark II. First and foremost, obviously, is the size. Like, look at this thing. It's almost the size of a deck of cards. So if you look at this, it's really very comparable. Like, even the thickness. You can clearly see that the G7X is really a tiny camera. So you could literally put this in your pocket and always have a professional camera with you and not just have your phone because some people just opt to shoot with their phone but for me I prefer to have a real camera so having having a G7X Mark II in my backpack is really good because yeah I can shoot close to professional footage right and just for comparison's sake if you look closely this is my A7 IV look at the size difference like the G7X 2 is even smaller than just the lens. I know this is a very unfair comparison because the A7 IV is a completely different camera, but you get the idea, right? The G7X Mark II is really compact and it's small, and it's very easy to bring along with anywhere you go. So how about I serve you guys the veggies first? Let's talk about the complaints or cons I have with the G7X Mark II. And the first thing is there is no mic jack. Instead, they gave, gave you a flash, right? But there is no mic jack. 
Huh, that is a very painful pill to swallow because if you want to use this as a vlogging camera, most of the time you'd want to have crispy audio, right? So there's a lot of workarounds around this, but I would love for it to have a mic jack. I think they did it on the G7X Mark III, but the only problem is, is that you don't have a place to put the mic on. So most of the time for G7X Mark III users, they still have to buy a cage to put the microphone on, which defeats the purpose of having a small camera like the G7X Mark II, right? And number two is no 4K. I know I said that I don't really shoot in 4K that much, but it would be nice to have. So just in case you guys want to shoot a project or probably something more professional, and you just wanna use your G7X and unlock it to its fullest potential, having 4K sometimes does the job. But I still stand by my words though, 4K is not as important as having good usable 1080 footage plus good color signs, which the G7X Mark II has. And the third point, which is I think the most difficult pill to swallow on the G7X Mark II is the mediocre autofocus. And man, oh man, the autofocus on this, I don't wanna use the word sucks, but it really is bad. Sometimes you don't know where it, it's hunting to. Sometimes it will focus onto your face and sometimes it, it won't. It will focus on the background and it just drives me nuts. So my way to work around the bad autofocus on the G7X Mark II is to just uh, go to your Q settings or your function menu and just hit manual focus. So again, set your angle, press manual focus, and then you're gonna be good because it won't hunt anymore and it's just gonna stay focused where you set it at. So yeah, it's not really a problem for me because I'm used to using manual focus. And my last complaint for the G7X Mark II is the way that the tripod head or the tripod mount is installed. So you can see that, right? So this is the tripod mount and this is the battery door. So you can see, right? If, if you put a tripod on it, like a mini tripod like this, right? So which is what you would normally do for a vlogging camera, right? So you can actually put it on a table. The only problem is now you can't open the battery door. That is the biggest deal breaker for me. But then again, as long as you keep charging your, your battery or your camera on the go, maybe you'll never have to go through this problem. So you'd never have to remove this, go like that and then change batteries, right? So yeah, that's my complaint number five. It's just the battery door is always blocked by this. So I know I've been babbling about complaints about the G7X Mark II, but let me talk about the main strength of the G7X Mark II really quick. So if you are a content creator, uh, maybe you're just starting out and you do opt to buy the G7X Mark II, this camera is just amazing when it comes to color. That's the main strength of this camera. Because if you are just a beginner, right? I'm sure that you won't have that knowledge to color correct or to color grade. This camera does not require any of those skills. If you just want to just focus on recording or just making content, this camera is for you. So when it comes to YouTube filmmaking or YouTube content creation, the more friction between you and making content, the more likely or the less likely that you're gonna be able to press record and get your content out. So the G7X Mark II is made in a way to make that not happen because this one is literally a point and shoot camera. All you need to do is have your content ready and just hit record and you're gonna be able to get good straight out of camera images. And I think that alone makes the G7X Mark II worth it in 2023. Do not think what other people say that you have to get the, the latest iPhone or the latest Canon camera or Sony camera. Don't think like that. The G7X Mark II is so, so worth it to buy in 2023. So if you have any further questions regarding the G7X Mark II, please leave them in the comment section down below and I'll try to help you guys out. And if you have any ideas regarding future content that I can make for you guys about the G7X Mark II, please do so as well. That's it for me guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and as usual, see you guys next time. Peace.